I am Eileen Grena. I'm the Assistant Dean of Delaware Law School, and I would like to present to you today. So just a welcome and a history of Widener University. Widener University was founded in 1821. It's a top-ranked university located just outside of Philadelphia, and we're named a military-friendly university for seven years in a row. Our origins date all the way back to 1975. And interesting enough, we are, we are the only law school located in Delaware which means that we have a very, very strong partnership with the Delaware Judiciary. We also have a strong partnership with the Pennsylvania Judiciary because we're only 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia, right over the Pennsylvania line. So we, what does that mean? It means that our alumni typically become judges and professors as well as attorneys in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. And so with that, students often practice in these areas and we have faculty from all over the world as well as these located states. Our LLM is ranked best in value, best in experience, and best in career opportunities by the, national, by the international jurist. Again, our location serves us well. Delaware is located um, in corporate America. So Wilmington, Delaware is known as the unofficial corporate capital. That's 65% of Fortune 500 companies here in Delaware. They're incorporated. Incorporation takes one day in the state of Delaware. And our foundation is where global corporate compliance begins. Also, conveniently located, we're only two hours from New York City as well as the District of Columbia and Washington, D.C. We have historic Philadelphia only 30 minutes away. We're located in the heart of the Brandywine Valley, and Brandywine Valley is very historical. We have shopping, we have entertainment hubs. Our shopping, if you don't know, is zero tax. Students and global students come from all around the world and love the fact that there's no tax in our state. Hi there, this is Director Pam Crow, and I welcome you also to Delaware Law School, and I thank you for joining us. And I'm going to continue on with the presentation, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the values of our law school. We do strive for excellence for our students. We are um, cl a close-knit community here at the law school, and so when our international students join us, we do have a uh, quite frequent interaction with them, and we do want them to excel. And with that, we uh, invite students to visit us at any time if they need assistance with their studies or they're feeling um, a little overwhelmed. And then we also invite them to do fun things with our office as well. And so we have student activities, which we'll talk about later. But we do strive for excellence, and our uh, tenured faculty members also um, do everything they can to help our students succeed. We also value inclusion, and our international students are welcome onto our campus with our United States Law School students, as well as our uh, undergraduate paralegal students. We have quite a diverse population here at the law school, and inclusion is very important to us. We want our international students to feel welcome. And in addition to our law school campus, we also include our students in the uh, main Widener University, which is located in another state in Pennsylvania, but it's only a short 20, 25 minutes away. And so uh, the International Student Services Office on the main campus also uh, works with us to make sure that our international students are included. We also value practical skill building. We want our students to learn in their classrooms what they're going to be doing in the real world. So practical skill assignments that uh, reflect what will happen in a law firm or if a student wants to go on to become a judge, they'll get some, some experience seeing how that's done and what's needed for those positions. We value our corporate law fundament fundamentals. As Dean Grena mentioned, we are in the unofficial corporate capital of America. So many corporations are incorporated in Delaware, and the Delaware law that comes out of our judiciary court is used all over the world. And so our, um, our goal is to be sure that our international students are very well versed in that corporate law. We value immersions in culture. We um, invite our students to join us for gatherings where we all bring a dish from our home country. And um, we want to learn about our students' home cultures. And our students are often very interested in learning our culture here in America. And so uh, we, we enjoy 
showing students how things are done here. We recently had students, we celebrated birthdays for some of our students, and I know in some countries birthdays are not really celebrated. So for some of our international students, it was the first time they, we sang to them and they blew out a candle and made a wish. So, so uh, immersion in culture is in both our culture and in our students' cultures is very important to us. We also value immersion in live core proceedings and corporate activities. And being so uh, close to our Delaware judiciary and also Pennsylvania, we're very close uh, with Pennsylvania being right next to us in historic Philadelphia, we uh, take the students to witness court proceedings. Uh, and um, because we're the only law school in Delaware, our Delaware judiciary oftentimes holds court sessions here in our courtroom that's uh, here on, on the law school campus. Uh, and um, immersion in corporate activities as well. So we have various speakers come in who are corporate attorneys uh, and run major companies as well as law firms, attorneys who uh, work in law firms that represent major corporations, global corporations, U.S. corporations and global. Uh, and so it's, um, it's a nice immersion into corporate law while you're here. We also value preparation. We want our students to be prepared for their next step in life. And we do that through all of these items that I've mentioned here today um, it, it, to complement their law school education while they're here. And to that end, we do educate global attorneys. We have a diverse population here on the law school campus, uh, and, and as well as on the main campus uh, at Widener University. But here at the law school, colleagues meet other legal scholars from around the world. And these are individuals who we encourage collegiality with because what better way is there than to go out into the world after you receive your degree and be able to pick up the phone and say, I have a friend in Spain and I have a yeah. friend in India and I have a friend in China and um, let me just call them. And I went to law school with them at Delaware Law School so I can call them and, and ask for advice. And, um, commis commisery with uh, legal aspects that are going on in their daily lives. So we will uh, kind of turn it now into our programs so that you can choose the right program for you. We have many programs and so I think you'll find that um, we, can, we can have something tailored to fit your specific needs. Hi again, it's Eileen Greta. I'm going to talk to you right now about our LLM in Corporate Law and Finance. Our LLM in Corporate Law and Finance is an on-campus program. It can be completed in one year. That's one academic year commencing in August or in January. You can start either semester or you can start in the summer if we make sure that you come in with the right courses. Mm -hmm. So you have three times to start. Our summers begin in May. Our fall begins in August, and our spring begins in January. The program is 24 U.S. credits, and our required courses consist of American Legal System and Legal Research and Writing and Analysis for Foreign Trained Attorneys, Business Organizations, Business Principles, Federal Business Regulations, and Advanced Corporations. And in addition to those re required courses, you'll have extra credits left mm -hmm. over to choose electives of your own, right. um, whatever your goal is for your educational knowledge, you can choose electives with those remaining credits to tailor your degree to what fits you best for what your intent is for your goals for your career. Absolutely. Some students have chosen to go on and do mediation, arbitration. Mm -hmm. They've chosen to do interviewing skills or um, a clinic or a directed research, which then they can write in a topic of their choosing and bring it back and, and use that when they interview for a job that they have this very nice portfolio built up from all of the research and the writing that they've done with us. We also have an LLM in American Legal Studies. This is also an on-campus program. It can also be completed in one year as we just discussed. It's 24 U.S. credits. The courses consist of American Legal System and Legal Research and Writing and Analysis, and the other class is Professional Responsibility. Those are the required courses. Then, as Director Crow just mentioned, there are other electives. The American Legal Studies program typically is tailored for those that want to go on and, and have a very robust idea and immersion into U.S. law. And so your courses will consist more of the traditional U.S. courses. 
tort law or property or contracts, mm -hmm. constitutional law. Mm -hmm. Many times students take the American Legal Studies program in order to sit for the bar. They want to go in and take the New York bar. In order to do so, this program is essential to be completed and it's completed in a way that allows you to sit for that bar exam. We'll have one-on-one -on -one discussions as with us to make sure that you're ready for that bar and also for those that are advising here at the law school, we have an advisor. We have bar prep courses. In addition, we also want to talk to your bar representatives in that state. So you'll have a lot of coaching and hand-holding as you move through the process to make sure that you're ready for that bar exam. We uh, also have some other LLMs that are online only, and um, those online LLMs focus on compliance. And so I'll talk first about our LLM in corporate and business law with a concentration in regulatory analysis and compliance. Compliance is um, not something new, but something that is recently a booming industry. And um, it, it kind of stemmed from the financial scandals of 2008 with um, WorldCom and Enron and some regulations that were put into place as a result of those financial scandals. The purpose of compliance is to um, avoid financial fraud uh, and to encourage an ethical culture within an organization. And uh, some of the regulations that came out of the financial scandals were things like um, Sar Sarbanes-Oxley, and uh, which requires increased regulations for financial reporting for publicly traded companies. And uh, also another regulation is the Dodd-Frank regulation, which um, has all of the rules for whistleblowers. Who is that individual in the company who knows that fraud financial fraud or abuse, financial abuse of resources is going on in a company and they want to tell someone, but they want to do it safely. They oftentimes want to do it anonymously. So Dodd-Frank um, uh, consists of all the regulations that um, handle whistleblowers and much more. So um, there's also regulations that are, have global impacts like the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and the UK Bribery Act. So um, avoiding financial corruption, money laundering, all of that goes into play with our compliance programs so that students are aware of the laws that impact corporations, then how to assist companies with building a compliance program that's effective for encouraging ethics within an organization. Uh, we are proud to be the recipient of an award winner from the Society of an Award yes. from the Society of Corporate Compliance and Ethics for excellence in creating educational programs that promote the compliance profession. And listed here you can just see a few of the courses that we do offer in this uh, program. In addition to the corporate compliance, we also have an LLM in health law with a focus on regulatory analysis and compliance. So similar to the corporate LLM that we have where we go through the regulations that impact corporations, in the LLM in health law with compliance, we focus on the regulations that impact the healthcare industry, including global healthcare. So um, we go through the regulations for healthcare and then also through the elements of the compliance program and how to build ethical um, behavior within a healthcare organization. There are certain things like kickbacks, um, pharmaceutical rules, where you don't want a doctor to receive any kind of uh, kickback, they call it, mm -hmm. for maybe promoting a specific medication right. um, in, within their practice. We were ranked number four in the nation recently for the best health policy master's degree, so we're, we are excited that we were uh, listed so top in that, in that ranking and some of our exciting courses that we offer in this program are listed here. Um, next, we have summer law programs. We have a wide variety of uh, topics for students who want to just join us for a few weeks in the summer. So students may not want to uh, come to Delaware for a long time or may not be able to, maybe you're working. Mm -hmm. So we do have these three-week immersions which are fantastic for, for international students because students come here, they um, spend time here at Delaware Law School, they get an immersion in the class that they are choosing, which I'll talk about on the next slide, 
but then we also show uh, students the, the um, area around us because we're so centrally located, close to New York, close to Washington, D.C., close to Philadelphia. When our students come here for these immersions in the summer, we do take the students on these um, excursions. There's also campus housing. We have dorms here on the uh, law school campus, so the students are comfortable. They're here. We're here to be their guides um, and their connection to everything that they need while they're here. Where do I go to the supermarket? Where can I go get a burger? You have to come and have, you know, yeah. some french fries or, uh, you know, ice cream. And, uh, and the sessions run in June, July, and August, so there's a variety of programs to choose from. Uh, session one, which is in June, we offer advanced corporations, human dignity rights, and environmental human rights. And so again, these are three-week programs. Um, students can take multiple programs at one time. There are three programs listed here. Two of them run in the morning and one of them run in the afternoon. So students could choose to take advanced corp in the morning and environmental human rights, or they can choose to take human dignity rights and environmental human rights. Then session two, we focus on the U.S. legal system, and we also have a um, session on anti-corruption, which again relates back to our compliance focus and avoiding financial fraud. Session three, which runs in July, is U.S. constitutional law and international money laundering and corruption. We also have what we call dual degree programs. Our dual degree programs are for students who are completing their LLM or their Master I or their Master II. Those students have the opportunity to come to us for a semester and receive a dual degree. What we typically do is we partner with your home university. We allow their, the credits that you're taking at your home university to then transfer to Delaware Law. The students then will be able to come and stay with us for one semester and receive two degrees, one from your home university with a Master I, Master II, and one from us. So you would receive it perhaps an LLM in corporate law mm -hmm. from Delaware Law School as well as your degree, your Master I, Master II, or your LLM from your home institution. You would graduate here, cap and gown ceremony, work with faculty here, and that way it's an exchange of credits and you receive both for all of your hard work. So we are delighted to have this opportunity with your home institution and we will work on that with you as well as your school and your faculty of law. Next we offer uh, for our students who are coming in the summer to, uh, if everything falls into place, right, and students come in the summer to start their LLM. Mm -hmm. Uh, we offer a one-week intensive legal English and orientation to U.S. law course. Um, this can also be taken just by itself without uh, the LLM, but we know that you know when students come to the United States, typically they need to be involved in more of a program than the one week. Uh, but this is offered if students would like to come in the end of May and have one week with us to learn about legal vocabulary, U.S. legal writing, mm -hmm. uh, and some study tips for how to succeed in the LLM program. And then there will be um, the summer law programs <coughs> and summer courses that start two weeks later. <coughs> hi, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Swanson. I'm an admissions counselor for the Doctor of Juridical Science program. So this is our newest program, and it's really exciting because we have a lot of interest in the program. It can be completed in three years. Um, in years one and two, you, uh, there are some in, uh, special courses that are included on campus. However, on year three, you can uh, complete the coursework away from campus. Uh, we accept a variety of topics. Of course, it has to be within a framework of corporate and business law or health law. Those are the two areas that you would actually be confer the SJD uh, degree within. Um, so uh, there's some special admission requirements for the SJD program. The dissertation proposal is probably the most important thing, and it would need to be a minimum of 10 pages, and that, uh, that would be without the bibliography or cited uh, reference page. 
Um, so, and if the candidate attended a program in the U.S., both letters of recommendation have to be from professors, excuse me, that taught a substantive course in that LLM program. So it wouldn't be just someone that, you know, you occasionally came across. Uh, uh, if you can just take a few questions, there has been a, a couple of questions that uh, uh, the attendees had asked uh, it, it, during the course of the presentation, if uh, you can answer some of them. Uh, so we have, uh, we have Akila who has asked, like, uh, for, for, for the LLM, uh, is there any LLM program that is related exclusively to uh, international commercial arbitration or any other alternative dispute resolution program, either as in the LLM or as a summer law program? And her follow-up question is that, uh, what is the kind of visa that is required if, uh, if she were to apply for, an, uh, for a summer law program? The visa, um, I think it's a J it's visa, a J visa. Mm -hmm. for that. The programs do meet the visa requirements. Um, that uh, means the program has to be 22 days long in order for students to obtain the visa to attend them. And for an uh, Thank you. Does I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I was saying that, uh, you know, I, I was just asking Akila that whether that answers her question because uh, she has typed out these two questions like what is the visa requirement for the summer, uh, if she were to attend the summer law program and she also wanted to know if there is any uh, alternative dispute resolution or arbitration programs specifically. There is not a specific, there are courses here within your corporate LLM and there are courses here that, re, that also revolve around arbitration mm -hmm. as well as um, dispute, dispute resolution mediation. and mediation and those would be your elective courses in your corporate LLM that you could take. Just not offered as a three-week summer immersion. Oh. Correct. It's not a three-week summer immersion but it is within the LLM programs. Thank you. And there is another question from Anu. Uh, Anu asked, uh, asked like she would want to know some a little bit more detail about the JD program as well and is there an accelerated JD program that is available? Um, exactly. For the JD program, for the JD program she would apply for a JD. Um, so she would apply to the JD. She would need to have her um, LSAT scores, her GPA, we could absolutely um, link her with the admissions counselor and admissions office so that she can apply directly to the JD program. Mm -hmm. For our programs, we handle LLM's SJD, which is your PhD in law, um, as well as um, any undergraduate degrees in law. Thank you. I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, and there is another question from Ashnika and uh, she asked like uh, if she were to join for a summer law program, uh, is there any specific criteria for joining the, uh, joining the uh, summer law program and uh, do they need to have any, uh, any kind of mark requirements or letters of recommendation or anything like that for the summer law program? They do not. They do need to be a student in good academic standing um, and so we have an application that she can quickly link to um, and then she would just come for the summer. We have students from all around the world that are coming. So as long as they're in good academic standing um, and that's just sending us her letter of recommendation as well as her application, she should be fine. Thank you. And one, uh, uh, one, one more question. Uh, it's like, uh, is there any program on public international law? And if there is any program so specifically on public international law, would you be able to um, suggest uh, or explain further about it? We don't have something exclusive to public international law. What we do have is a course that runs for the entire year which is a practicum course in a topic and a case that is on international law and it deals with an international, it deals with the UN and it deals with um, a, a group of UN um, military coming into an area um, in Europe and occupying that area in order to help the community. Unfortunately, um, there's a health concern as well that happens and it becomes a legal case in the in the UN and so it's documented one from the US and two from an international law side and what students do is they write 
and they assist student, I'm sorry, they assist participants in that case. So it's a live case that's going on in the UN right now that has global implications as well as health law implications. So that is what we teach here for an entire year. It's a practicum. Thank you. Uh, and also there is uh, one further question. I mean, I I'll let you uh, carry on with the presentation, but the, there were a couple of questions, and then uh, pro probably if we can take one more, and then we'll ask towards the uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation. So uh, uh, the, the the question is like the American legal system uh, does that you know does all LLM programs, whether it is on on uh, um, corporate law or any any other specialization, is is the American legal system a requirement uh, of it does it form part of every course? Typically it does. We could look and discuss with each student their, their background. So if I have a student that's coming in and has a strong area in American legal system or has taken U.S. constitutional law or U.S. American legal system in their studies in their home country, then that's fine. Then I would waive that course absolutely. However, many students don't from around the world. And so we would like to have that because what you're going to be doing is research here. You're going to be doing research and understanding case law. So a strong foundation of the American legal system and where laws come from, state laws, um, federal laws, and how those laws are determined give you a, a, a basis when you're sitting next to JD students who are in your course. So that way um, you'll, you're, you're stronger when you're in class with these students. Thank you. I'll, uh, there are further questions. Uh, would you like to answer them or would you like to continue and then come back to it a little bit later? I'm happy to answer. Oh, perfect. So uh, th there is a, a follow-up question by Anu who had just, uh, uh, you know, you were mentioning about the, the live, uh, you know, uh, assisting the UN um, you, you, assisting our case on the UN. So she was just asking, like, is there any particular requirement to get into that? There is not. That is also an elective course. So a student that applies for the Health Law LLM or Health Law SJD um, or even corporate law can take that course. And it is with our um, two faculty. One is in um, very, very strong. She actually is the international advisor to the Haiti courts. So she will be teaching that course and that is an elective course for the entire year. So there is not it really is just part and parcel of the academics that you have here and the opportunities. Perfect. And there is a, a, a further question uh, like uh, from Shitaj and he asked like, uh, are there one year LLM course on intellectual property law or on cyber law, which is like technology law or something similar? Uh, and uh, and what, what do the, what are the things that uh, a US law school look for in a student as a whole while applying for an LLM? So I'll take the first. Um, so, right, did you, mm -hmm. For an LLM, um, so for students for an LLM, you will need your TOEFL scores, you will need your application. Um, I'm looking for a 6.5 in an eyelid, I'm looking for an 83 in TOEFL. I'm looking for a strong academic record. Um, and letters of recommendation from your faculty. For the cyber law and for the um, IP law, they are offered here. They are part and parcel of what we teach here at the law school, and so those classes are offered here in many shapes and, and forms. So yes, we have them. Yes, they're amenable to our students as part of your degree. And there are exemptions to the TOEFL and ILET score, so, um, and these are listed on our website. So if students um, have a bachelor's degree or a graduate degree from a college or university in um, a variety of countries, uh, they, then the uh, test scores are waived. waived. And the list of those countries is on our website. Mm -hmm. There's one further question from Mayank, and uh, Mayank asked, like, you were mentioning about the dual program and uh, uh, how a student can uh, do a semester with, uh, with Delaware Law School. And uh, is it possible, is it, is it mandatory to have a tie-up with the law school that is here uh, or in, in, in their respective countries? Is that, uh, is that a requirement or um, can anybody be a part of this dual program? 
Um, it works both ways. So if I have a student who's going to be transferring in for one semester, they could come to me for one semester and I would transfer in their 12 oh. credits from another university if they were um, if they were credits that were transferable. So you would send me your application, you would send me all of the classes that you've taken from your other law school in your LLB program or in your um, Master's 1, Master's 2. I would then find out whether or not they're transferable. You can stay here for one semester because you'll be taking 12 out of 24 credits. Um, the 12 transferred in and 12 here. And then you could finish here and then go back to your home country and then finish. So it doesn't have to be an MOU, most with, an, with your home institution. However, most schools, in order to legitimize or allow an ease of that transfer of credits, typically has an agreement with us. So we would work with the student in order to have them come in and finish here and then go back to their home country. That is doable. Um, but typically I do have an agreement with the school just for ease of transferring those credits. And one, one more question we have from, uh, from uh, Nikhil, and he asked, like, uh, is it possible to get into the SJD program directly without pursuing an LLM program first? Typically not. No, it wouldn't be. You would need to have an LLM or be um, at the very end of toward completion of an LLM, in which case you may be granted a conditional acceptance uh, upon the success, success, excuse me, successful completion of the LLM degree. And Sumit asked, like, is the for an LLM program is 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 there any significance for the LSAT score at all, or uh, you know, it's it's purely based on the uh, based on the application that is made and the supporting recommendation letter? Um, the, the, yes, you do not need no. to have the LSAT, an LSAT score for admission into the LLM program, correct? Just the JD program. So, so we, we, can, we can continue with the presentation and if any of you have any questions then please feel free to type it into the chat box and uh, uh, we, can, we can ask uh, uh, Pamela uh, or Pamela and and uh, uh, and the presenting panel in in short sh shortly. So I, I think you can continue with the presentation, and if there is question, then we can we can interrupt in between. Okay, thank you, Vishnu. Yeah. Uh, moving on, I just wanted to mention um, that we do have a strong alumni network in correlation to what I mentioned earlier about the diverse population here on our campus in our LLM and SJD programs. Uh, you, we end up with alumni from around the world, and so for the students, that's a fantastic network to have of colleagues. Um, and then additionally, many of our international students um, are able to stay in the U.S. and have careers in the United States, and so then you have um, you know, this global network of, of colleagues in the legal uh, profession. I did want to just share with you one of uh, our student experiences from Adalberto. Adalberto was here last year in our LLM in corporate law, uh, and he said to me, my experience at Delaware Law School as an international student was pleasurable and exceptional. They took good care of us, and they let me know that I count and that they were there for me. I was lucky to be a part of Delaware Law School, and I will never forget that amazing experience. When I first came, I was scared, but the way the staff taught me and treated me made those fears disappear. And um, that's really a true statement from Adalberto about um, students being a little hesitant and uh, nervous. It's, it's, it's not easy, first of all, traveling. Travel, students travel far and wide and they're tired and right. they get here late and, and we have a very welcoming atmosphere. When students arrive on campus, they're not here alone. There is someone here to help them and get them set up in their dorm um, and get them acclimated. And um, because the, the dorms are right on campus and our office is right here, we are always here for students mm -hmm. to assist them. And so it made me so happy to hear that Adalberto was able to overcome those fears right away um, with the help of, of everyone here on, on the campus. And then I did just want to move in a little bit about our esteemed faculty. They are committed to excellence uh, and one of our values that I mentioned earlier. They're committed to assisting students with practical skill building. Uh, and, and uh, whatever they can do to help our students succeed. These are just a few of our faculty members. We have Professor James May. We have uh, Professor Luke Schuer, 
Professor Erin Daly. Uh, Ms. Daly is the um, uh, international human rights. Um, International Law and Human Rights Liaison for Haiti, Haiti, which Dean Greta mentioned earlier. We have Professor Eileen Sutton. She was a, a corporate trial attorney for many years. Um, still is, right. um, just um, not as, as uh, she's leaning towards retirement soon. So she has a large um, wealth of experience to share with students. Our, um, one of our cor other corporate faculty members is Professor Paul Regan. Uh, Professor Regan um, also teaches in one of our summer law programs, in the Advanced Corporation Summer Law Program. And he was just named to the Ethics Board for the State of Delaware. Wonderful. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, Judge Wendy Roberts. She is a professor in our LLM program as well. And I will say the uh, Dean of the <laughs> Law School for la last. This is uh, Dean Rodney Smala. He is the um, fearless leader of our law school here. And he is a brilliant man with many uh, distinctions behind him, uh, writ has written many legal treatises and books, uh, US constitutional law, First Amendment rights, uh, and much, much, much more. Um, so this is just a little brief um, snapshot, snapshot, excuse me. <laughs> so yes, um, Dean Smala uh, actually handled a First Amendment case where um, there was a there was a murder, right. and the uh, murderer claimed that the uh, the publisher of a book who wrote instructions for how to commit a murder uh, told the, the the murderer how to do the murder that it came from the book, and so there was a, a lawsuit about that, and uh, a movie was ultimately made from that book, and it's called Deliberate Intent. So um, that's something you could look look for online mm -hmm. and and uh, watch that movie, and that is our. Dean Smalla being played by, uh, I think, T Timothy, Timothy Hutton. Hutton. Yep. So, exciting stuff. Okay, get my mouse working here and move on. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do a lot of activities with our students. And I will uh, hand this over to our admissions and student services counselor, Kristen Swanson, to discuss a little bit about that. Thanks, Pam. So, so basically, the activities are an important part of the student experience because it gives them an opportunity to, to, uh, to enrich their lives um, outside of the classroom. And we have kind of two groups of activities, I would say. We have both uh, informal events and, and structured organized trips. So some of the informal things that we've done, as Pam mentioned earlier, were the birthday celebrations. And we also had a pizza party. So we try to do little things around our office so that students can interact with one another. Uh, also, we have organized trips to places like the Constitution Center in Philadelphia, uh, the Pennsylvania State Capitol building in Harrisburg. That was a recent trip, and the students really, they all, they you can tell from the pictures that they really enjoy uh, doing these organized ac activities. And then we had a fall picnic. Uh, we also had a gathering at the dean's house. Uh, at, at the end of semester, uh, we also try to, to get together again as another time uh, to kind of celebrate the academic year. And then also we had a trip to Washington. So it's a really important part of the student's experience here to partake in these activities. I wanted to take you on a little picture tour of our campus so you can see what uh, Delaware Law School looks like. This time of year, we're actually heading into winter right now, but this picture was taken in, in um, October, which is when our fall season starts, and you can see the uh, leaves changing. It's a very pretty picture, and that's our fountain out in our uh, um, greenery area of the campus. And this is the entrance to the law school. And you can see here in the picture on the left that there's a road right um, outside the law school. And I just wanted to mention that that road contains every store and restaurant you can think of. <laughs> so right within walking distance of the university is um, every imaginable creature comfort that you would need while you're here. This is our main law building, both the front door and then a, a side view here. That law building contains the administrative offices. It contains our um, amazing law library, which we'll see a picture of in just a minute. We have a cafe on campus where students are able to uh, go in. It's 24-7. You can go in and, and get snacks and sandwiches and some microwave meals <laughs> and sodas and much needed coffee, too. Um, this is Polish Hook Hall. This is actually the building where our offices are located. And uh, this is our front door to our <laughs> office. So when you're here on campus, this is all you need to look for to come see us. 
We are the Graduate International Compliance and Legal Studies Office. This is our Ruby Vale Moot Courtroom. So this is a large amphitheater style courtroom uh, where, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Delaware Supreme Court will come and hold uh, hearings here. This is where they do it. We also hold many other events. As you can see here, this is a re recent event that we just had last week in Ruby Vale. Here's some pictures of dorm life with uh, our comfortable dorms and kitchens so that students can um, feel right at home. Here are the pictures of our law library. And we also have um, all of our students receive codes that allow them to do online legal research as well as the book research. Uh, and we have librarians uh, on staff all hours of the day and night to assist students with their research. So uh, planning your trip and arrival, one of the first and key things would be to communicate uh, frequently and pay attention to the emails from the International Student Services Office. They provide assistance with visa information. They also give you helpful tips for airport information, transportation, and a lot of other things. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is provide you with the uh, email address for uh, them, and that would be iss at widener.edu. Uh, so they're an important part of our, um, our, our process. Um, also, we would, uh, we're here to help you, and you can call or email, email us at any time during your preparations for travel. Thank so. you. Thank you. And here is just um, the contact information for Ms. Swanson and Assistant Dean Eileen Brenna, and then also for Carla Harris, who is our admissions specialist for the LLM program. And so that concludes our presentation, and we're happy to take any additional questions, Vishnu. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of questions that has been asked. Uh, you know, uh, oh, Nupur asked, like, oh, would, a, would, would a summer law program uh, uh, hold only a certification? In value in the home country, or uh, you know, can can it uh, uh, can can them uh, can it then uh, give them some eligibility of sorts to sit for the bar exam if they plan to take a summer law program? So that's one question from the book. Um, the summer pro law programs absolutely hold validity. So the, the validity is that they are run under the ABA guidelines, American Bar Association guidelines, that they're offered within the hours of the ABA, that they are um, courses that have course credit attached to them, so that you are here in a summer law program that is accredited and is also offering you a certificate when you leave as well as coursework that you can take back with you to your home country or that will apply to your LLM should you choose to stay. Then if you choose to stay and move forward, depending on which LLM program that you're in, it will apply to your American US LLM or to the corporate law LLM. And so having those summer law programs incorporated into the American Legal Studies LLM mm -hmm. uh, will then work towards eligibility for a bar exam. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. And there is another question. I hope that answers your question. Uh, another question is that uh, is by Sukanya, and Sukanya asks like uh, she wants to practice as an immigration lawyer uh, in the U.S. after doing an LLM. So should she then do the bar exam if she wants to concentrate on immigration law? Um, the bar exam is not topic specific. Therefore, if she wants to practice in any area of law in the United States, she will need to be a barred attorney, so she will need to take the bar exam. So uh, there's another question from uh, Sumed, and Sumed has uh, done a lot of extracurricular activities in, uh, during his uh, time in law school. So his question is, uh, does uh, participation in activities like uh, Model United Nations or Mood Code, does it have any value while making the application for an LLM uh, program? Absolutely. Absolutely. That knowledge, that experience, the leadership qualities that that student brings to the school and that will carry forward here will set him or her um, heads above other applicants also apply for that seat. So yes. 
thank you so much and there is I hope that answers your question Sumit and there is an, a, another question from uh, Nupur she asked like once the LLM uh, program is over how long does a, a student can stay back in the US uh, to find a prospective uh, training opportunity or if they plan to write the bar exam for how long can they stay back? So that will depend on the visa that they come with. Um, typically you have a certain amount of time to stay here. I think it's 30 days before you need to leave. Um, if they ask for OPT, then that visa is extended. And we can work with closely with the um, visa office, OPT meaning optional training. So that typically the optional training will go forward and last up to a year. But you're looking for placement while you're here and with the LLM programs. But we can answer her question more specifically with the um, International Student Services Office and work one-on-one -on -one with her to make sure that she's with the right visa and has OPT to stay if she would like to stay longer and also take that bar exam. I hope that answers your question. And uh, there is another question from Anushu. She asked, like, what is the statistics of Indian students at uh, the law school so far? Uh, as in, do you have many people from India uh, in uh, India currently doing an LM program or um, any other programs with you? We do. We've had um, students from India, and, and we're so thankful that they come, and we're delighted to have them. We've had students from India blended in with all of our other students. Um, and so every semester we'll have applicants from India come um, and stay with us. So yes, and we're delighted to have more. So we welcome you. Uh, another question that is very, very popular question again, and it's been asked so many times to, to uh, during our webinar as well, is, is uh, what are the scholarship opportunities that are available and uh, uh, you know, to what percentage can a fee be waived off or, uh, you know, some kind of grant be g given for an LLM program? Sure. Um, the student scholarship, there's two different scholarships. There's a scholarship that's offered for the dual degree. So that if you come in your scholarship, and, I, and we transfer in those 12 credits, those 12 credits themselves are a scholarship because what you're receiving is half of a LLM degree. Mm -hmm. So that is one way a scholarship is offered because now you're receiving 12 of your credits, so at least $30,000 as part of your LLM degree when you come in as a dual student. Mm -hmm. That is one. The other way to come in is to just have strong grades, to have strong letters of recommendation, a strong background, and that we will take a look at each student individually and offer a scholarship. You will need to complete the scholarship award um, or the um, request form, request form, and then to be eligible, which is on our website, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you will need to have already completed your application prior to asking for the scholarship, so that you're an admitted student before you are asking for scholarship. And then we'll take a look at everything and, and offer you a package that fits your needs. And um, just as a just to add here, our website is DelawareLaw.Widener.edu. That's DelawareLaw.Widener.edu. And so when you go on that mm -hmm. website, you can find the uh, International Student Scholarship application. Thank you so much. And I hope that is clear. And uh, we have uh, uh, another question that uh, uh, by Han Hania, who I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, I have, she has been a part of uh, an NGO for uh, for a while and uh, does uh, a, a non-governmental organization. And uh, she uh, asked whether that certificate would be helpful while in, in, in uh, while making that uh, making an application and also to mention that in uh, in her personal statement. Um, yes, to both. So your work with an NGO absolutely sets you apart with your understanding of how one corporations work within different countries and how that NGO is moving forward in order to promote the topic of that NGO and how it's working within the country to give back. And so that is a wonderful opportunity to write about, to put into your proposal, and to show the strength of what you've done and put law into practice as well as community service. I hope that is clear, Hania. And uh, 
I think that's it with the questions that we have. Uh, if there is any further questions, then you can ask right now. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, we uh, otherwise we can we can conclude the webinar. So, uh, oh yeah, there are a few more questions, and uh, uh, it is it is um, it, it, it's it's by Sukanya who asks whether uh, the work experience with uh, with uh, with an immigration law firm in India. Uh, does it make any difference if she's planning to do an LLM over there and uh, you know planning to stay back and practice as an immigration attorney that does does that help it absolutely helps and so your knowledge and experience that you have now as an immigration attorney will, will bode you very very well when you go and you want to work especially with your OPT work if you plan to stay after your LLM because it gives you a leg up when you're interviewing with other attorneys here and your specialization. So I would utilize that because it's a strength when you're interviewing with part of your OPT after your LLM. And so it also helps to bring a lot of guidance and knowledge into a course as well as in your proposal when you're applying for your LLM. So you can talk about that in your um, application. Yes. Uh, so th there is another question from Mayank, and he asks like uh, he he has a, his, he, his question is very specific relating to the MOU and uh, to the to the dual uh, degree program uh, because he says that if there is uh, if, if there is no MOU that is available and uh, uh, and and the university or law school where he is pursuing his uh, undergraduate degree in law. Uh, uh, is there any alternative solution for that? Um, I'm happy to work with him one-on-one -on -one and any student and I wanted to add this and so um, please please if you have questions please email any of us individually we're happy to work with each student individually and to answer questions after this presentation you have our emails and so that is something that we would work towards either one um, with that home institution that I would move forward and have an MOU with that institution and work with the faculty to put that in place before the student comes. Um, typically we can move rather quickly to do that and to help the student or to look at what you already have and your courses in order to allow you to come and transfer those courses in. That is a one-on-one -on -one, um, specialization that this law school does in order to tailor our programs for each student and give them the best value and academics that we can here. So please feel free to email me any questions as well as Ms. Swanson as well as Ms. Harris. Uh, I hope that uh, answers your question, uh, Mayank. There is another question that is asked by Hania, like uh, is, is, there an, is there any program uh, within, within the LLM which deals specifically with human rights and child rights? Um, again, we have courses in um, the practicum in human rights. We have the course in the summer that has to do with human dignity rights and human, excuse me, environmental human rights. And so those two courses are offered this summer. They would also play a part if you stayed for your LLM. They would be courses that go into your LLM. So yes, as well as the practicum that we had discussed, that is a human rights issue. The practicum that lasts the entire year, that's with Professor Daly, has to do with human rights because they had um, a corporation, a military corporation that came in to another country that then changed the health law status of that initial country that they immersed into and so and then left and then so that they left the country after helping them in the military status but left them with a health law issue and now there's a case and so it, it pinges on corporate law it pinges on environmental law it pinges on international rights as well as international human rights and so there are a lot of opportunities here to take courses that that further your interest, but they're within a LLM, either in health law or corporate law. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. it, um, it, it, it's, it's like if they have any further question, they can, they can definitely email you or uh, yeah. uh, they, can, they, can, uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they can contact any, any one of you. So that, that is great. So uh, I think that's with the... 
Yes, uh, you were saying? Um, I'm happy to Skype as well. So if they would like to Skype and talk to us, that then one-on-one, -on -one, as well as calling us or as well as emailing us, then we're happy to have Skype conferences as well. So thank you, Nupur, for this question. And uh, th th if there is no further question, we can conclude the webinar. And uh, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us and also to, the, to, the, to everyone from Delaware Law Delaware School of Law, thank you so much for taking the time to do this presentation and for explaining everything relating to the uh, application process as well. That has been extremely helpful and for taking the questions. Um, so on behalf of the attendees also, I'm thanking you. So, uh, it, it, so with that, uh, we can conclude the webinar. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.